Thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'd like to take apology for Lisejo, who couldn't make it, and we are thankful that uh, Mustafi is here. So in today's session, we are going to speak about decoloniality. Now, it might sound like something that is very big, which it is. However, in today's session and for the purposes of today's session, we are going to try and shrink it down in a basic manner so that we can understand. Now, the first word that comes to my mind when I think about decoloniality is the issue of colonialism or to colonize. And we need to understand that part of the term so that we can have a deeper understanding. So therefore, in this presentation, uh, we are quickly going to look at what to colonize is in terms of three key areas, which is the decolonization of knowledge, the decolonization of the mind, and the decolonization of being. Next slide. So what is decoloniality? Decolon well, like I said uh, previously, for us to understand this term, we need to look at the verb, to colonize. And for us to understand what to colonize is, we need to understand that colonize comes from the word colony. And for you to have a colony, you need to colonize. So we are going to now quickly look at the definition of um, to colonize so that we can get a deeper understanding. Next slide. Now, according to the Oxford Dictionary, the word colonize means to settle among and establish control over the indigenous people of an area. So in other words, when you colonize, what you do at first is that you come to the people, you live among them, you relate positively to them, and only after that you will dominate them and conquer them and destroy them. So according to this definition, this is what to colonize means. Now, now that we have a basic understanding of what the element of decoloniality is, we now need to look at these three key areas for us to understand exactly how this colonization process took place. Next slide. Now, if, if you look at this word colonize or decolonize, you have to understand that if to colonize is something that you do and it's a verb, to decolonize is also a verb. And in this case, to decolonize means to undo what the colonizer has done. So if we were to look at the definition of, of Oxford and to say deception is involved, to say that um, uh, destruction is involved, then we have to be able to realize that to decolonize, you have to undo the deception, you have to undo the destruction. So in undoing and understanding these terms, we have to look at, firstly, the decolonization of knowledge, secondly, decolonization of the mind, and thirdly, decolonization of being. Next slide. Okay. So what does it mean to decolonize or undo the process of knowledge. What this means is that when colonization happened, the traditional ways in which African people knew their knowledge systems on how to generate knowledge was completely destroyed by the colonizer. And in turn, it was replaced by a new way of knowledge that makes the African people to be dependent on the colonizer. So when you look at the issue of decolonizing knowledge, you have to understand that the knowledge that we all currently know here, sitting in this room, most, if not all of it, is incorrect. Because the knowledge that we learn now is something that was not generated by us Africans. Next slide. Now, if you... Uh, follow with me, you will see that these three key areas, decolonizing knowledge, mind and being, follow onto one another. So now, if knowledge is taken away from you and something else is put in its place, it affects the way you think. So now, now that the African person 
does not have their own knowledge systems and cannot generate their own knowledge, it affects how they think in the sense that when they view the colonizer, they view him as someone who is better than, who is superior to them, because it is the colonizer who now gives the new knowledge that the colonized is experiencing. So in other words, if you look at um, the issue of architecture, for example, in, African, uh, in our African ways, the buildings that we normally use were round. And the, the issue with those buildings is that they used to evenly distribute heat and they would be cool during the day and they would be warm during the night. Now, the issue there is when the colonizer came, they utterly destroyed that system and introduced their own form of ag uh, architecture and other things in order for us to be dependent on them. Um, now, when the mind needs to be decolonized now, we are in a situation now then where we have to couple new knowledge or go back to our old knowledge system so that it can affect the way we think. Because if we cannot generate our own knowledge, then we will always feel and seem and think that we are inferior because we are always looking to the knowledge of the colonize, colonizer. Next slide. The next uh, key area is uh, decolonizing of the being. Now, this term refers to the lived experience of the colonized. Now, in other words, if your knowledge is taken away from you and your mind is affected, that means the way you live will also be affected. Now, someone who does not have the mind to think does not act like a normal person. Now, what I have done here is to take from uh, an article that I once wrote about decolonizing of the being to say that in Sisutu, it is called Situzela, a zombie, meaning the person who is colonized becomes someone who is mindless, knowledge is without knowledge, because they cannot generate their own knowledge, their own thinking, their own being. So in other words, the black African who is colonized finds himself in a situation where he is utterly dependent on the knowledge, the input of the colonizer at all times, and left on his own, he is basically dead. So it is very important for the black African to realize the importance of being able to go back to their knowledge systems so that they can be able to free themselves from the colonizer. Next slide. Now, before we conclude quickly, I would like us to quickly uh, think about this issue of decolonizing knowledge, decolonizing of the mind, and decolonization of being. And I want us to view it as a continuous process, something that does not stop, because the issue of being colonized also is a process, and it continues and has been continuing since probably the 14th and 15th century. And I want us now to come to a point where we engage and we answer questions. So the question, the first question is, what impact did this presentation have on you as a community? And the second question, how will Denda Wema use these principles of decolonization in their pursuit of decolonizing Christianity? Thank you.